Hi everyone and welcome to yet another week on the podcast. Um, it's a very interesting day because I have switched the conversation a bit because after a few episodes of talking to mums as my guests, you guys have said, Allah, boy child, mums, where are they? And today I've managed to convince someone who's a dear friend as well and a father to come on the show to have this very important conversation on fatherhood in 2023. The challenges it comes with, the joys it comes with, the approach to raising children in a very dynamic times. And I'm actually uh, sort of still starstruck, despite us being friends for so many years right now. <laughs> I remain starstruck. <laughs> And I'll ask him to introduce himself and tell us what he does now. Maybe start with where we know you from. Right. For the audio listeners, the second, I'm sure already you figured out who it is, the second <laughs> he opens his mouth, we know exactly <laughs> who we're talking to. So maybe let's start with an introduction. Fantastic. My name is Makfoul Mohammed. I have been an entertainer uh, for the past 23 years. Right. Uh, going to 24. I have been in TV, radio, and at the moment I'm trying my hand in events promotion nice. and entrepreneurship nice yes i have uh, been on radio for about 15 years for those who remember capital fm um it was late night yes biggest show in the yeah, afternoon that's where it started breakfast show, that's where it started <laughs> that's, former TV <laughs> that's where i saw her that's where we started that's where yeah. we started yeah and of course tv as well for many many years and and yeah just trying my hand differently some something different right now right uh, yeah excellent yeah. so awesome. as always i'll put all his uh tags Yes. Um, what handles <laughs> that's what they're called handles yeah, for social yeah. media in yes. the description awesome. so that anyone who wants to follow reach out dm yeah. it'll be in the description box yeah. um i don't even know them by the way <laughs> <laughs> i know you. i'll find you <laughs> and tag you <laughs> awesome. Awesome. um but the first thing we have to just laugh about is the fact that i'm the one interviewing you this time let me Isn't tell you, that mind -boggling? it is so mind boggling. <laughs> so I'm on this other end. I'm thinking, what am I supposed to do with myself? Right? It's, I'm, usually I'm on the other side. Right, exactly. And I remember, uh, when was it? 2017, 16, if I'm not wrong, around mm. there is where when we started having this conversation on air. Yeah. Um, and, and I remember my listeners were like, yo, we've never had a discussion uh, with a gynecologist in the morning. Right. That yeah. was one of the, yeah. Because it was already taboo. Like we were exactly. breaking Exactly. We were breaking it. Yeah. 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 And then the things that we were talking about. Yeah. They were a bit of cringe <laughs> moments, but it was amazing yeah. to, to just open up that world and, and, and have those kinds of talks. Yeah, I, so being on this and now being interviewed, it's, I know, it's super it's, weird. It's blowing my mind right now. <laughs> the fact that, and then I'm remembering how nervous I was because it was my first, yes. very first time like properly on radio. And I'm yeah. like, oh my God, can they hear me? I remember and you were so particular. Guy, <laughs> It's like, yeah, you're, Listen, you're scientific I came, words. I set like, up my notes, <laughs> my pens. I'm like, OCD. Uh -uh, I have to have everything yeah. properly done. And Makbul is like, can you just breathe? Can yeah, you just relax? <laughs> First of all, they're not seeing you. Totally, so calm down. Totally, totally. <laughs> but just to come full circle and for yeah. you to agree to be on an episode. I'm so honored. I'm so happy to have you here. You. And especially so for this conversation, because I know it's something very dear to you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so... Again, like we we keep being um, accused of not giving men the platforms True. to have True. important and deep conversations. True. We seem to have focused. I mean, it's necessary to focus on True. women. There's so many issues that still we will be um, facing and being challenged yeah. by. But it doesn't mean we need to leave our other halves behind. Right? We, we need to. <laughs> we need to have those conversations. We need to have spaces where men talk, especially now, yeah. where there's a sense of transition to from you know cultural traditional to a more modern more liberal man mm -hmm. and and that by itself is just bringing too many problems True. and we need to address it True. because there's a, a loss of identity i think yeah and and i'm, I'm actually starting one of these podcasts to try nice. and address nice. uh, some yeah. of those issues as yeah. well because we we have 
uh, sons who are growing up. Mm -hmm. We have uh, women who are playing the father role mm -hmm. and, and raising men. That in itself is another topic. Yeah. So it's important to have those discussions. Right. Yeah, so I'm happy to be here. No pressure as the first guy, but you know, <laughs> just happy no to be here. No, no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully open the floodgates and anyone else I invite, feel free. Feel free to awesome. come on board. Um, so just to start so that we have a bit of context, yeah. you're a father. How many kids? Uh, tell us a little bit about your babies. I don't think they're babies that much anymore. I will but always yeah. see them as babies. <laughs> of course. I will al I They'll always be your babies. They'll always be my babies. Yeah. My daughter turned 16 last month. Oh, wow. Okay. She is amazing. Seeing her growing every single day has given me a different perspective in terms of being, um, just being a man. Mm. So, uh, even forget being a father. Um, her needs, her her aspirations and everything that she's going through at the moment it's just taking me back to where i was and how um mm. uh, when i was younger the things that i, I dreamt of and then the kind of support that i really wanted and and i think we'll get uh, we'll get into that a bit later on but it's fantastic to see that mm. and my two lovely boys uh one is turning 13 getting into teens okay okay and he is an absolute amazing lovely soul yeah uh and and uh, my last one who is just a bunch of joy so you know when you look at your kids and you think that one is going to be like me. Mm -hmm. The last one, mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, that's that's an artist oh, waiting, really? waiting okay. to happen. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> nice. And at least he has you to help with that. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. But I'm one of those fathers, even my daughter uh, was trying to get into acting for quite a while. I'm one of those fathers who find your way. Mm. Yeah, find your way. I like that. I will help you yeah. when you get stuck. True. But if, if you cling on to my name, then you won't develop as whatever, as an artist true. or whatever it is that that's you want. That's true. You have to find your way, yeah. find your identity, True. and find your place. I like that because yeah. that's actually a very powerful message in itself. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, teens. We are pretty much all teens, and this is yeah. the the toughness of the conversations because that's what I started yeah. this podcast for: is yeah. to have more sensitive conversations, yeah. normalize having these conversations. Yeah. And so, one of the big things we've been addressing has been, especially for a parent, having children growing up and becoming adults in mm. themselves and then it forces you to think about your own upbringing and yeah. what your experience of transitioning especially during puberty and becoming a man what that journey was like so maybe <laughs> i'll take you back there right and see um what was your experience did you have parents who were able to talk to you about the issues the changes that were happening physically psychologically um, your sexual reproductive health, your yeah. identity, all of that. What was your experience growing up? I don't think you can put parents from back in the day in those kinds of conversations in right. the same sentence. Right. We never had. <laughs> Just listening to you, I'm like, never had those it kinds of conversations. It blows your mind, right? It, it's so mind-blowing. It's like, oh, sexual reproduction. Yeah, what? We just what? saw it in class. Yeah. Um, what else? Uh, mental health. What? Mm. It was mental health. First of all, mental health is brand new. Yeah, mental health is it's such a 2023 <laughs> kind of thing, you know? Right. <laughs> no one is talking about it. Yeah. I grew up in a space back in, in, um, in the early 90s, mid 90s, and, and, and of course, early 2000s when I was in, in high school. Mm. And, and we didn't have these kinds of talks. Yeah. We never had talks yeah. of, you know, sex and whatnot. I had a funny story when someone asked me, so how how did you, did your father or your mother have the talk with you? I didn't. Mm. I remember one day, and, and now it's, you know, I'm just trying to be open so that we, we <laughs> yeah. all get it. I When I was young and a teen, and you know, your body starts changing mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Mm. And in the morning when you wake up as a boy, sometimes you wake up and you're, yeah. you know, yeah. you're... Your biology has woken up. Your as well. biology has woken up as well. <laughs> yeah. Right. That was the only time I think I've, only, I've spoken to my mom actually. Right. Because she was like, oh, eh, eh, uh, 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 uh. "You're a man now. You're, You're a man." A man. Now. Yeah. 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 And that was the full extent of it. Mm. That was just it. My right. dad was just like, "So now you can get someone pregnant." That's, That's it. it. That was it. Be careful. That's it. I don't oh, want wow. grandchildren. Right. That was about it. So this new age where you can talk to your kids about it mm. and express yourself mm. we never we didn't have that, that. i've we said that before that. it seems to have aged me significantly in the <laughs> eyes of the audience <laughs> but that is my age we, we never <laughs> we did we just didn't have the conversation yeah. for us it was we were also there was the, also the the fact that we were separated exactly. growing up because exactly. there was boys schools and girls schools yes. and for me i grew up very much in the 
So we were Catholic, yes. so I was sent to Catholic school. So I was mm. in Catholic kindergarten, Catholic primary. Mm. And then my parents decided these nuns are going to make my child fail. So then they transitioned me towards the end of uh, primary school mm. to a mixed boarding school. Wow. I cannot begin to explain. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> the shock. Yeah. It's not even culture shock. It's just the shock because I've come from a space where my mom said yeah. sex talk. If you talk to boys, you get pregnant. Exactly. End of story. Yeah. That was the full extent of the conversation. Yeah. Then now I've woken up, I'm in a boarding school with, with boys. boys. So now do we talk? Yeah, no. Yeah. If even I... you look at the ground, you don't even, <laughs> <laughs> you don't engage at this level because exactly. I'm like, ah, as far as I know, if I talk to you. I will get pregnant. Yeah. If I shake your hand, I will get pregnant. Exactly. So we didn't even have the guidance, the basic information. I remember sex ed for us was a horror show because yeah. it was a small biology class. Right. Followed by graphic photos of various STIs. Right. I don't know if you had that in school, we, but that was yeah. the extent of sex ed for me. That was about it. And we remember I remember going to those some of those classes and, and we never even heard what the teacher was saying because half of the time it's like, ooh. Yeah, exactly, uh, that, exactly. Uh, that's if you were so talking yucky. about a period, when, yeah. you, when we were taught about periods, in fact for us, like I said, the separate boys and girls right. and then even in the boarding mixed school the class was separated totally. so we didn't have the same sex ed class you had exactly. reproduction and it was, let me not call it sex ed please <laughs> elevating this too much it was biology <laughs> on reproduction that yeah. this is what's going to happen with your body this is what's going to happen with their body exactly. and we didn't know what the boys were taught and they didn't know what we were taught yeah. and it was kept very separate so that was the extent of education for us and it's fantastic to, to for you to say that because in terms of, of the girls you did get a sense of education yeah. and reproductive, of course, you know, yeah. uh, how your body is changing and whatnot and all those amazing things. But for boys, we, we first of all, we didn't pay attention. Right. Uh, yeah. Every time the diagram came <laughs> on, we made fun of it. <laughs> right. And then peer to peer when we we're talking, mm. that's how we understood sex. Because it's like, oh, my God, you guy, you know, a chick can do this and I'm right. a guy. Yeah. That's the extent of how we learned about right. sex. So it was in the wrong ways completely. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It was all about, uh, you know, how big are you mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. showing it. it, it being a teen insane. is insane. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. You learn the worst things about sex. Yeah. So when you're getting into, you know, your 20s, your 30s, the foundation is totally wrong. True. And, and that's why I think these spaces to talk about these things are very, very important mm -hmm. and try and change that and unlearn that for the betterment of the people who are coming after us. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't, they'll end up where we are. True. Right? True. Where we have a separated society where you have constantly Victor Victoria fights, who's right, who's wrong, mm -hmm. and all these things. And mm -hmm. it's just in our upbringing that, you know, we had some... Yeah. spaces where we didn't talk about things that needed to be spoken about. Exactly. Yeah. And then the thing that used to surprise me the most is then once you come out of that as your basic foundation, yeah. you land in campus, you're now in university, and not only are you an adult living by yourself on campus, yeah. experiencing people and learning how to make friendships and starting your relationships, but now there's a pressure from home yeah. to have a person. So suddenly, the conversation switched from, if I talk to boys, I get pregnant, yeah. it's, so where is he? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And I'm completely unprepared. Totally. Right? Yeah. And, and when we got to campus uh, as, as boys, now the conversation changed completely. So I'm, I'm trying to, to create a space where we can uh, talk to men about some of these things and, and mostly about, you know, when we're growing up mm. because that's where the damage began. Mm. So imagine from, from, you know, when you're, born to around eight, nine, that's where you receive love and you mm. understand compassion, you understand the, how a man is supposed to be because you have uh, guidance in terms of your father and whatnot. Yeah. Even if there's, you don't talk in this space, there's, there's a sense of, of a, a model of yeah. some sort, yeah. right? When you get into your teens, you're in school, it's all about, you know, the peer pressure. Mm. It's, it's, oh my God, my justo is longer than yours <laughs> and, and all these funny, funny things. Yeah. When you get into campus, it's, it's now conquest. Mm -hmm. How many girls yeah. have you heard? Exactly. You have heard a certain number. Mm -hmm. You're not the guy if mm -hmm. you're not. Sex in this country, and I think around the world as well, if if not guided, it just becomes something totally different. Sure. And I think we're seeing the effects of not having those types of conversations mm. now yeah. and, and how the society is so fabricated at the moment. That's true. Yeah. Because remember, those of us that we're describing, those yes. are the parents now. 
right? Those are the That's parents. That's who we're talking about. Though. Those guys who <laughs> didn't get any information. Any information. Right? And then it was experimental and it was, like you said, for men it was conquests. For women it was, can you preserve your purity? You're supposed exactly. to get married first and you're supposed to. And I'm like, but who's, who, if, if I'm preserving and yeah. you're conquesting, who is? Exactly. <laughs> So What's all of, going on? Yeah, right. all of a sudden we finish campus and then we're being told, okay, so now get married. Yeah, now get married. How? And have children. And you're it, like, with who? Yes. <laughs> How? Yes. Exactly. And that's why when, you fin- when you're getting married and then, you know, after a couple of years... It's like, I don't want to be in this marriage yeah. anymore because I have an idea of how this marriage is. I'm a man and therefore I, I have the ab- uh, mm. you know, ability to wander around yeah. and have yeah. enough because this is what I've been taught. taught yeah. And for the woman, it's, you know, stay, be mm-hmm. humble, be mm-hmm. patient, submit. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. those are not the times that we live in right exactly. now. Right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's quite interesting. It's, it's a very challenging... <laughs> <laughs> but that's the yes. baseline, the foundation was set and that's how the exposure that we had at that yes. time, then now you're a dad and you have a daughter and sons. <laughs> Paint us that picture because now you're, I'm pretty sure <laughs> when they were growing up, you were thinking, hey, this conversation day is going to come. <laughs> I was dreading it. Right. I was really dreading it. Mm. And I think my perspective changed to when I, um, when I had my daughter. Mm-hmm. Right? That, that really slowed me down and right. got me to think because I looked at my life and all the things that I've done mm. and we laugh mm. about this but you know mm. <laughs> it, is what, it, mm. it is what it is mm. <laughs> so I, I completely changed my approach when it comes to talking to women it comes to relating to women because I wanted her to have a sense a foundation mm. of, of when it comes to a man someone that they can look up to someone that they can trust mm. Because there is not enough of that going on. Yeah. And then when I when the boys came along, I felt an obligation to be a better man. Right. Because yeah. now I have someone who will look at me and want to emulate. Because a son's first hero is always the father, mm. right? Right. And and that in itself made me, you know, become a better person, mm. so to speak. Mm. Kids don't come with a manual. They look at you mm-hmm. for guidance and every single thing yeah it's scary Mm -hmm. to think that you who has not been able to learn so many things and still learning on the fly as you're growing up now has the obligation of taking care of three amazing souls and actually giving them the best of who you are and what you have yeah it's not easy Mm -hmm. and then coupled with a society at the moment which is fractured so to speak and at the same time, a society which is too exposed. Mm-hmm. Back in our days, we had our issues, but not as much as yeah, they are right true. now because we were not as exposed right now. Everything is on as the phone. Everything, everything, everything. Is a Google type away. I can't Literally. tell my kids, I can't tell my daughter, if, if you look at boys, you will get, get pregnant. pregnant. Yep. She knows. She, she'll read and tell you no, but this is how babies are made. She knows exactly how babies <laughs> right, are made. Exactly. Right. So it, it you have to, we have to change our approach completely mm. when it comes to kids. Yeah. But yeah, lovely three kids and joy to the world. Right. They, they are just amazing. They they teach me every single day how to become a better man. Yeah. And how to become a better father. Right. Yeah. Have you started to have the the talk? The birds and the bees. <laughs> so I, my boy, uh, the other day, and and I'm sorry, I'm exposing you <laughs> to the whole world, my son. I love you so much. Um, but he did come to me and he's like, "Yo, dad, um, I, I now I woke up in the morning and and mm. you know I was like, yo, so I, I was so happy. I'm like, yo, dude, yeah. now you're a man. Yeah. And he's like, what does that mean? I'm mm. like, so every single morning when you wake up, your biology does this because mm. of this, mm. right? Um, and also it means that now you're at a stage where you will start feeling your body changing, mm. you'll, you'll have a bit more emotion, mm-hmm. and you'll have a bit more connections to the girls. Mm. So while you're going through that, we can go through that together. Right. Tell me how you feel, I'll tell you how right. you know, yeah. how to go about it, because I went through it, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and that's the approach. With my daughter, I'm just open door, tell me exactly what mm. you're going through, mm-hmm. and I'm there for you. Right. When she started a period, I spoke to her as well. Of mm-hmm. course, they were, the, the moms and the aunties came yeah, around, but yeah. I, I wanted to be involved as well. Mm. I was like, yo, so now 
don't make me a grandfather. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet ready. I'm still young. <laughs> I'm, I'm still trying to, you know, kill it in the streets. Be easy. Yeah. But as well, just, just being able to have uh, an open door where we can have those conversations with her to me is is great because we never had that mm. right? right especially fathers talking to daughters true yeah true in fact it was so taboo even i'm sure that people listening or watching this and going you, you, what you talk to your daughter about what yes. it's it still yes. is taboo which mm. i don't understand because again this is your body biology we're not even talking mm. sex yet we're not even talking about interaction between totally. two people we're talking yeah. about what is happening with your own body yeah. and one of the things that I see in practice, because i um, looking after women's, primarily women's, but again, mm. they come in as couples, yeah. um, sexual and reproductive health. One of the things that started off by surprising me, but now I've started to understand it more, because mm. again, contextualizing with our culture and everything is the shame a lot of women have yes. around bodies, around body parts. Sure. And sure. because another thing we weren't really taught back mm. then was to name things for what they are. <laughs> So we have nicknames, yes. all sorts of <laughs> nicknames. <laughs> I, I mean, I went on TV the other day talking about vaginal health and one of the, the fellow guests, her, her thing is Miss Victoria and Mr. Victor. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Call it as it is. It, this is a penis. This is a vagina. Yes. Like we need, I'm okay. You do you. I'm yeah. going to call them for yeah. what they are because I mean, that's one of the things and it's, we laugh about it, but the shame around it True. is actually so limiting because there are women who can't. They're so uncomfortable with an exam by the doctor. Oh, wow. Because for her, I mean, even explaining what's wrong is yeah. a problem because she's like, something's different. Something feels weird. Something yeah. Different. Yeah. Uh, so, does it, um, uh, so the questions I'll ask is, does it look different? Has there been a change in color? Is there, it's like, what? And they're like, no, you that's want me intrusive. To look where? <laughs> <laughs> you want Pardon me to me. do what? Oh, dear Lord. Like, but it's your body, it's on you. So, if it's different, how can you not check to see? And she's like, that's not mine. You're Niamze. That's how it said. <laughs> <laughs> so then it just tells me how far we have to go exactly. to repair that foundation. That, that's very, very interesting you say that because I'm not quite sure if it's a sense of, you know, tradition or religious beliefs that mm. made us mm. be in this space where we, we're not supposed to have conversations. And, and I think that's the difference between our generation and the generation that is, is, is here now. We used to be told um, when grown-ups are talking, mm -hmm. yep. children... Yep. Get out. Get out. Get out. Integrate. Immediately. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm a human being as well. I have ideas. I have opinions. Mm. No. Mm. Be there. Go and play over there. With exactly. The rest with your cousins. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Now, kids are there mm. with us. Mm. They ask us questions. We are, they have more... Uh, idea of how the world is working than us because they're constantly sure. on the phones, yeah. right? Yeah. So now we have, we don't have a choice. We have to have this conversation. True. We have to name them True. as as they are. We have True. to say, you know, penis and vagina yeah. without cringing. Without cringing and yeah. collapsing. Because exactly. they'll pick up on your actions much more than your words as well. And then there's a whole entire world out there on the phone where if you don't teach them, True. now they will find they out. They will find out. Us guys knew pornography from catalogs. Mm. <laughs> These yep. guys don't even know what catalogs yeah, are. Yeah. Remember catalogs and, and the women, you know, modeling yeah, underwear? Yeah. That was the first idea of, of yeah. this naked woman. Yeah. Right? Exactly. And then there were magazines. Yeah. Now these guys have, they just Touch click on button. it. Yeah. We have to be more open True. about it. We have to call it, like you're saying, as it is. Because if we don't, then you yeah, know, yeah. it's going to get worse. Do you find any of it to be challenging now that you're having to have these conversations with your kids? Very. Mm hmm um, and, and the biggest reason I think is as, and I'll talk on behalf of Kenyan men, mm. um, there has been, like we've said, a sp we don't have spaces where we, we talk about these things. Right. We don't have um, people to look up to who can tell us about these things. Basically, <laughs> we have to start from scratch. It mm. has been a huge challenge uh, and learning mm -hmm. as a grown up. Yeah. And, and trying to teach at the same time mm. to, to the kids and the people who are coming um, behind us. Because there, there are young men as well who look up to me and think, you know, you're my mentor, yeah. I, I, you know, yeah. I would like to be like you. So that, that's added pressure because we are trying to figure it out as well. True. We were never taught, True. right? Yeah. 
So having conversations about sex, about growth, about relationships, it's very cringe. Mm. And then you're not quite sure if you're giving the right... Yes, there are uh, uh, places where you can go and, and, and see these things, read about them and self-help books and all these things, but it's not the same. I think experience is the best teacher, True. so to speak. So there's always that idea, am I telling them the right thing? Mm. Um, while I'm learning, while I'm unlearning, am I, you know, on the right path? And yeah. then I think it's worse off right now because now um, there, there are many divorces mm. and all these things. So doing it via Bluetooth mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is even harder. Yeah. 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 There are so many Bluetooth dads and, and moms True. around that True. now it's even more difficult. Mm. Right. Yeah. Um, is it, are we doomed? Because that's the, the, the next question. Because again, it is where we find ourselves. These are the circumstances we're yeah. in. Yeah. Um, what can we do to do better? I'll be honest, we, we need more of these discussions. Mm. We need more of these spaces to talk about them. And as, as men, I think we need to take up responsibility as mm. men in Kenya. Mm. We've really dropped the ball. We've really dropped the ball. It's you who said it. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I'm even, I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I keep on, I, I'm trying to be honest as much as I can. Yeah. Because, again, my, my children are watching. Mm. Yeah. But their friends, uh, people who are young are watching and, yeah. and, and looking at us yeah. for answers. We've dropped the ball and we need, we need to be a bit more. Uh, responsible, so mm. to speak. We need to, to we need to get to a space where we accept our part, the parts we played in our marriages and in in, in the community, mm. and try and do better. Right. We cannot blame the people who have uh, were before us yeah. for not giving us more information or leading us badly or not giving us love. We are a place where we need to heal mm -hmm. as men, mm -hmm. and then do better in terms of the people who are coming after. We cannot state, I don't want to see my children because of my ex-wife, she gives me headaches. It doesn't matter. Mm. Your responsibility still remains. True. The children are still there and they True. need your attention. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you and your ex are living in two different rooms, which I think is really toxic. At the end of the day, you have people who are looking up to you for every single thing, mm. including their mental health. We've seen a lot of broken homes. We've seen a lot of broken spaces mm. from, from where we're coming from in terms of growing up. Do we want the same stories? True. For them. Because they're the, now the next generation. Exactly. Yeah. We know the effects of broken homes. Mm. We know the effects of broken families. It is us. Mm -hmm. So what are we doing to make it better for them? True. Right? True. It's not doom and gloom. This is encouraging. Mm. Men talking is encouraging. True. Um, seeing, you know, young people create spaces amongst themselves to talk about these things is encouraging. Mm. But we need to stop fearing these conversations. We need to stop thinking about them as taboo and actually try and engage because we can actually shape and save the next generation. True, yeah. true. Then there's the morality conversation. Yeah. There is the um, what is correct culturally, yeah. morally, based off of religion. There's a lot of pushback when we have open conversations about taboo topics. Yeah, yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on those as institutions? Because again, I mean, I want to raise my kids to fully understand who they are and who they're becoming and yeah. how their bodies work and how relationships are formed and how to respect others. You know, there's the whole, there are many different conversations. Yes. But I have a moral standing, I have yeah. values that I would want to instill and impact <laughs> on them because that's, yeah. that's the pushback. I'm yeah. pretty sure I'll, I keep getting it on repeat yes. that, you know, what you're teaching is the white man's teaching. Exactly. What you're, mm. exactly. <laughs> you forgot it's about true. our culture. But I believe having done research historically culturally these were conversations that were intentionally had totally there was totally. no shame around yes. it, when you approached puberty you were pulled aside the aunties yeah. sat you down and talked to you the uncles yeah. and it was a community thing yeah and we've lost that entirely and somehow trying to get back into it yeah. has been deemed foreign exactly it, which true. confuses me that's very because true. i'm like um no but that's not anybody else's teachings yeah. if i go back historically yeah there was a role for my community to exactly. have taken over and taken yeah. all the girls together and taken all the boys together. Totally. And that's yeah. why I say in, it's, a, it's a very interesting time we live in. It, there are many challenges because there's so much exposure and mm. it's now up to the parent and, and your beliefs because now there are people who are like, no, I, I believe in astrology. Yeah. So yeah. I'll shape my children based on that. Yeah. And I 
don't believe in religion, but I'm spiritual, so I'll shape my children in that particular mm. way. And each has their own pros and cons because they have a way of relating to how you raise your children. Yeah. Um, so at the end of the day, the buck, I think, stops with the individual. But traditionally speaking as well, there are things that really help as well in terms of shaping these discussions and helping children. So uh, yesterday I was, uh, I was checking out the news and I saw um, uh, it's the Maasai season for circumcision mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and they were hundreds of hundreds of young men coming yeah. from different places from Kajiado from where congregating I think it was Narok or something like mm -hmm. that that is encouraging mm -hmm. because it, before circumcision the, the rituals their discussions that I had yeah. um, in, in different places so that happens in in the Maasai land that was very encouraging to see the things that happen in in the Nandi world I've mm. seen as well mm. uh, in in uh, the western part of it as well yeah. and I know in my coastal side as well we, we have those discussions I think it's only urban areas that yeah. it, it, it's yeah. a bit confusing mm. because there's so much exposure and there's so many things uh, to pick from yeah and we're so multicultural we here as well. are yeah. we are so yeah. at the end of the day it's an individual thing I have gotten to a space where I'm raising my children and and letting them experience mm -hmm. so when it comes to religion I am a Muslim staunch Muslim mm -hmm. uh, I, I was a teacher for a long time right but I grew up in a world which you know is a mixed world in an mm -hmm. urban world so mm -hmm. I I thought differently from someone who comes from the coast, right? Yeah. I'm raising children who, uh, in Nairobi maybe, <laughs> so many things that they've seen, yeah. so such diverse friendships that they have. Mm -hmm. I can't tell them, stick to True. this. Yeah. Be like this. Mm. You know, don't, don't, you know, look at girls, it's haram. Mm. They're going to have friends, yeah. right? Yeah. That's why I keep on saying it, it's based on the individual. Yeah. I am raising my children solely like that. Let's experience together. If you go through a bump, let's talk about it. Mm. If you have a question about religion, let's talk about it. If you have a question about girls and boys, let's talk about it and right. find out. Yeah. If you feel like this day and age, I identify as a bottle top. Let's sit down yep. and talk about it. Yep. There's that as well. Exactly. Yeah. Let's, exactly. Talk, let's talk and explore those feelings so we, that we can understand to. where this is coming from. We have to open yeah. up. We yeah. have to open up because it's, it's and, and I keep on telling parents, it's not my life and, and the lessons that I missed um, that I'm trying to impart. I'm trying to guide someone in a life that they are creating, True. even if they're young. True. It's their life yeah. and how they're going to shape yeah. it, right? That's, that's that's I think. I like that because one of the shortcomings that we have is you're projecting onto your child yeah. that they are a representation of you. So yeah. anything they do, you're like, no, 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 no. Don't. You're, don't because yeah. you're making me look bad, or that that's not how I raised you. Exactly. Or, we we can't do that. We can't. You know, I I studied law, so you have to study law, and you have exactly. to have a name like mine. Yeah. You have to go to the same schools yeah. and. But gone are those days. True. People have, True. have their own idea of what they want to be. Mm. And now we've seen the effects of being pushed in that direction True. and where guys are right now, True. you know, with traumas, with uh, depression and all these things. Mm. Trying to rectify that and, and trying to find the balance uh, between the old and the new mm. and, and being in a liberal world yeah. is really difficult. Right. It's, it's difficult, but it's an amazing challenge because, like I say, the, the kids will teach you. True. Yeah. True. Yeah. Um, in terms of the role of the environment in the outside world, for someone who is raising children now, yeah. we have government, we have the policy makers, we have schools, we have, like we said, religious institutions. Do they have a role to play with helping, especially with, as kids are growing, transitioning into adults? Do, they, do you feel that they have a role or is this purely a parent's job? We are by ourselves. Right. <laughs> we are by ourselves. Mm. Back in the day, we had a sense of a uh, community. Mm. If you sent your kid to school through two matatus, and on the other end, they get to school, you know there's a teacher who will take care of them. Mm. There's a teacher in case they fall down who will take care of them and, and always be there for them. Yeah. Uh, if you're not at home, you know there's a neighbor who is responsible and stuff. like We don't have that. Mm. We don't have that mm. at the moment. We don't have we our are, village anymore. We don't have our mm. village. We are all by ourselves at That's the moment. That's actually true. You used to go, you'd get off the either school bus or matatu or whatever, and as you're walking home, yeah. whatever misbehaviors, by the time you got home, you they'd know. already been reported. If exactly. at all you weren't 
stooped yep. <laughs> by the yep. person who saw you. Exactly. They'll take you home and report you further so yep. that you can receive another. <laughs> you remember back in the day when we used to talk to girls at the gate and then uh, you see there's an auntie coming you're like whoop. Woo. Everyone vanish away. into you know thin air. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. everybody was responsible for that child. Exactly. And, and you know, we... auntie will talk to mom, mm. mom will talk to dad, dad True. will talk to uncle, True. and then the parents, and then there'll be a case. Yeah. Now there, there's no sense of consequence, mm. really. Mm. It's people just do whatever they want. And, and that's why I'm saying we are on our own. Parents have been, teachers have their own problems. It's mm. very limited. Mm. Right, they can't have a one-on-one -on -one anymore with the children. There are too many children in class. Um, religious institutions have their own mm. problems, mm. radicalization, and all these mm. things going around. Yeah, government. Well, you know, <laughs> uh, <Yeah>. on our own, <laughs> <laughs> more than ever before. More than ever. We before. are very aware of how on our own we are. Exactly. Yeah. So parents in this country are really facing it at the moment because you have to make a life for yourself. You have to unlearn everything that you've learned. You have to go through your traumas and depressions and at the same time raising the next generation, mm. trying to instill in them the best of values by yourself. Mm. Mm. And then top all that with the multitude of, of divorces that are happening, it makes it even worse. Mm. It makes it even worse. Raising kids in, in this in this time mm, yeah. it's very very hard but like i said talks like these and spaces where we come together and talk about them are helping right yeah any advice for the younger men right now as they are developing and growing and becoming fathers themselves yeah. that you would have for them just any general advice for themselves like you said there's lots of learning and learning relearning yeah. that's happening and then now they have kids that they've already started to stress about <laughs> yeah. Any advice yeah. there? Yo, um, learn. Learn um, from people who are older than you. Mm. I remember being told about, you know, older people have wisdom, mm -hmm. but it was phrased in a bad way. You know, we're told to f always respect and always fear. It's mm. not about that. Older mm. people have gone through it. They've been through it. Yeah. Listen to what they have to say. Be around them. Mm -hmm. Yes, being with your peers is fun, but be around them. And then take your time. Mm. I don't know why there's so much uh, rush. We're in a rush. We, uh, did we, did, like, huh? <laughs> there's so much. I don't, I, maybe it's because of all the exposure, especially with the internet. Exactly. We are all in such a hurry. Marriage is not what you think it is. It's mm. not just the wedding. Marriage is not the wedding. Mm. Um, relationships are not just about having fun and sex. Mm. It's not. There's so much more to it. Yeah. Um, as a young man, fun is not the only thing that you need to have at the moment. And then, you know, having countless women. That's, that's... When you grow up, I think when you have a daughter is when you turn back and you're like, ah, maybe that wasn't the best choice. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, that's someone's daughter. True. That's your sister. True. That's your cousin. That's someone who you know. Now, how would you feel if they're treated like that? Yeah. I see people talking absolute garbage on on um, on social media and, and, you know, this Victor Victoria thing. All mm. women are like this. I'm like, you're just misguided. You don't have the exactly. right information. And exactly. just because now we don't have circles and spaces and people we can look up to, we are just landing on the next best thing that is there. And mm -hmm. that's why people will talk about, you know, um, chauvinist guys. I'm not going to mention names, but, you know, people who <laughs> talk through their bottom side <laughs> about manhood. And, and, and they and, have a platform and people and are listening. And they have a platform it's, it's and people crazy. are listening to yeah. it. Because we don't have people to look up to. We don't mm -hmm. have men standing up and saying this is how it is and that that's exactly how it's supposed to be. True. Because we're also trying to unlearn and find ourselves. So it's a mashup of so many things, but we need to stand up and be counted at the end of the day. True, we need to. True. Yeah. I like that message. And then now I'll flip it around. Because of the dynamics that we have now more than ever, yeah. there are a lot of mums who are raising kids by themselves. <laughs> There are also some dads who are raising kids by themselves. There yeah. are those families where they're raising them, but separately. Um, some of the moms I've had on here have had the question of, I have sons, yeah. and my primary concern with them is because their father is not part of the picture, what do I do? How do I approach that conversation? How do I approach yeah. raising men? Is it something that women have a role in, or do I need to look for father figures for them and find you know, role models and 
push them towards mentors? What, what advice do you have? For That's a sensitive a one. one. Yep. It's a tough one yep. because <laughs> we, we, we argue about it all the time. Mm-hmm. And, and it's first of all, it's not right that a woman should raise uh, a boy by themselves. Mm. Boys have so much energy and we are so destructive when we are growing up. Mm. And, and it, that energy needs to be, you know, uh, channeled in the right way and then yeah. that's why you see fathers having activities with their sons going you know d- d- different things and whatnot it's challenging mm. and and i remember there's a friend of mine who who called a couple of years back and and she she had a 12 year 13 year old boy mm. and and the boy woke up one day and and was like mom mom i'm in pain it's like what's what's wrong what's mm. wrong what's wrong and it's like I pain. He had an erection. Right, right. Okay. And he, you know, yeah. she doesn't know what to do. Yeah. And and my pal, she, you know, she doesn't know what to do yeah, either. Yeah, either. Yeah. So what she did was, <laughs> she went and got an ice pack. Oh gosh. <laughs> and and. <laughs> I mean, that's better than anything else, to be fair. <laughs> and told him hold it until it comes. Down. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> You can't. Yeah. It's it's unfortunate. We laugh about it, but those are the scenarios that are happening. Yes, they're single moms who are raising boys. Yes, they're doing an admir- uh, admir- admirable job. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it, it's a man's job. True. We need uh, to stand up as man and be counted. Yes, as a woman, uh, it's good to have um, father figures around, but that's just it. It's a father figure to mm. a father. Mm. Right? Yeah. Uh, Couple that with, of course, the mothers looking for love mm. as well, mm. and having different men yeah, in, in, the in the dynamics of dating with the, children. It's yeah. it's uh, it's a tough place to be. I I really feel bad for a lot of single moms, whatever the situation, whatever mm. the, the mm. circumstances were. But it's it's a difficult thing to raise a boy. Yeah, it's a very difficult thing to raise a man. Right. A man needs a woman's touch. Yes, you need a mother's touch as you're uh, growing up, but mostly you need a man to guide you on what, how to become a man. Right. It, it's it's because the definition of a man is not singular. True. It's a lot of things. True. So you can have a mentor, you can have a father figure, but at the end of the day, you need a consistent person who will show you. Mm. And and that's why I'm saying we're dropping the ball. True. We need to come back and and revisit this because it's unfortunate. Yeah. But for for this conversation, I would say. For women, if you're raising a boy, it's very, very important to have a father figure, a mm. consistent one, mm. not not boyfriend, uh, babe, mm. no, mm. someone who's in and out, no, someone who's consistent is the most important thing because then they have a reference on who they can look up to. It's mm. it's very, very important. That's true. It's very important. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think I think we've covered all the <laughs> tough ones. The ones actually, I'm sweating a bit. <laughs> I'm loving this conversation. I'm loving it. <laughs> we've actually managed those very, very well because me, I was like, hey, this ones will be tough. Yeah. <laughs> I came here knowing I'm talking to a doctor. Let me tell know, you, we're right? going to be open. Okay. open. You have to open up because, yes, again, and that's part of the reason why the podcast, why I've set it up as I have because... As doctors, we do all the talking. Yeah. We, you come to us with an issue, yeah. and then it's my job to listen and fix. Yeah. But then we don't have much of an understanding of where the, some of the dynamics come from, especially yeah. so when it comes to reproductive sexual health. Yeah. Lots of gynees will tell you we end up being psychologists as well. Because right. a lot of the problem is an issue around the person exactly. rather than a physical issue. Yeah. And so having these conversations, my hope is to start to open minds a bit because it's not that they're foreign. It's not right. that these are, I'm picking conversations and topics yeah. from the moon. This is everyday <laughs> life. Life, yeah. But why are we shying away from it? Especially like you said, like now mm. we've already seen that our silence has crumbled us to a point of, it's almost like, yeah. gosh, what? how do we salvage exactly. this situation? It's doom and gloom. Yeah. yeah. So instead of, I mean, we can't lie down and say, okay, now we are done, we are finished, yeah. this is the end. We yeah. actually have to start to fix the problem. Exactly. And the first step is having conversations about this. Exactly. Um, when I said I'm going to have dads come on, if I can get any men, yeah. the ones I spoke to were like, eh, I mean, I guess it's an important topic, yes, but yeah. like you said, yeah. I don't have a good relationship with my kids because I'm their mom or exactly. I don't have, I, we live too far apart or yeah. whatever. So they had 
reservations because again i'm speaking from a point of guilt and yeah. stuff that i have to process is stuff i'm trying to deal with and yeah. figure out myself. i'm not being a good dad exactly. i'm not yeah. being there yeah, yeah so then totally. it just there's so much there's so many layers and it's not a one conversation type of thing no. and no. it's not a one person at a time type of thing we haven't even scratched the surface of yeah. this discussion if yeah. you ask me we need like you said i like that it's like a call to action it is yeah it for, is. The, for the men for the men <laughs> we we need to yeah. we need to your ex is your ex she'll forever be in your life and you need to understand someone uh, one of my mentors told me mm. yes um now you're in a space where you are you are divorced and you're raising children but you need to understand the other person as well your partner is going to be there mm. regardless of how what you feel yeah. their graduations their yep. weddings mm. their birthday parties mm. you can't avoid them True. you have to if you're avoiding her then you're avoiding your, yeah, children. your children if you're avoiding him then you're avoiding your children as yeah. well and that's what a good place to True. be True. yeah so hopefully it it starts to my hope is that people start to have conversations yeah. in the space in which they are at because i think that's the beginning that's yeah. where to start from so mine again is a big thank you because you made this easy <laughs> even as you're on the other side <laughs> feel like i haven't spoken it's like that's the but, thing but let me ask you something now mm. being the interviewer for uh-huh. like a quick second has has all this put you um not put you off but but made you rethink about families and children in mm. in, in raising kids in this society um so it's a, that's an interesting question because everyone keeps asking me when when are you have oh. these children when oh, right. I, when oh the pressure the, the pressure, pressure. <laughs> the pressure the pressure and i'm like um chill guys it's what i do for a living yeah. so you can't romanticize pregnancy you can't you can't listen i i'm on the receiving end in the labor ward there's no way you can make it seem romantic okay exactly. you've seen it <laughs> i've seen it all i've seen it all and then i then have conversations with younger people who are choosing to be child free that's another term i was taught Yes. And I think it's an effect of all the things we've just discussed yeah. because they didn't have the role models they needed yes. in order to then think family is something I'd be interested in. Yes. And they might not even have the insight because if you don't know, mm. I mean how could you do better if you don't know better? True. So for True. me it's it doesn't it doesn't dampen it for me. It's more like it challenges me because right. if and when I choose to, I sort of have an idea and again it would be plugging from the medical training and experience right. and also now the societal what my parents were able to impact on me because I'm from a very medical family yeah, as well. Yes, of course. So in as much as I joke as my mom said don't talk to boys you get pregnant she also sat me down and gave me a proper biology yeah. drawings <laughs> color book this is what I, this looks <laughs> like this is, like we had a very thorough discussion yeah. same with my dad they timed my conversation around my period perfectly because nice. i got it 2 weeks later i was like <laughs> what in the juju <laughs> just happened yeah but then because I, i do have a very good foundation from yeah. that aspect and yeah. been lucky enough that my parents have set almost too high a standard yes. when it comes to relationship yeah. it it doesn't like put me down or put me off no, it's I... more i feel the challenge i feel like if we if you're in the right space with the right people person yeah. it's you you literally can create um an environment for your children to grow up safer totally well informed mm. because again running away from information is the biggest challenge because right. they will find it right now with the internet the way it's set up it is what it is and you will find polar opposites of the same fact yeah. exactly one person says it this way this other person says it this way yeah. so how do you discern what is true so you need to be present and you need to be able to guide them so my only reservation tends to be time will right. i have the time to to be there prioritize and be there because right. again my industry and the work that i do and then i've chosen to add on yeah <laughs> this baby <laughs> here we go <laughs> so will i will i be able to consciously make that decision to yeah. prioritize them mm. and just help and again plug into because i am a strong believer in creating your bubble exactly find the right yeah. people find the right environment mm. find the right activities yes. and then pull from that because you have your own values and your own ideas exactly and have the right people right. because then like you said we don't have a village but i can no. create a village your around, own village yeah, your own tribe that when the kids come mm. this is you can lean on auntie so and so you can this is uncle so and so you can have conversations with them you can have conversations with me most exactly. importantly don't exactly. ever be afraid to come and talk to me yeah. because again you'll never be fully prepared True. that's that's the reality True. one day your kids will walk in and ask you something and you're like eh, 
<laughs> even with my vast training and experience totally yeah. totally even when my kids have challenged me yeah. a lot when when at the height of 2020 you're totally right yeah um my children came and asked me one of my boys like so i'm seeing this this flag this lgbtq flag mm, right what does it mean true i was born in the 90s yeah i'm not equipped to have this conversation <laughs> I have no idea where <laughs> no to idea. start, yeah. right? Yeah. But I need to talk about it. Yeah. I need to give them a space where they can be open enough to feel comfortable to have these discussions and not be afraid True. of some of the answers. And I, on the other hand, should not be biased in my beliefs mm. and open a world where, you know, it's it's okay. Yeah. It's, it's not a lifestyle thing, but people, you know, um, uh, go through it and give them the pros and cons and everything that they need to know equip them so to speak yeah. but, but like, not tell them what to do true but like yeah. you said you have to educate yourself as well you have first. to and learning <laughs> and yeah. and if if i if i say nothing else in this podcast please and learning and therapy mm. are the biggest things mm. that i think um, have helped me in my life right right, right. and learning all my biases mm -hmm. that are not working for me at the moment mm. Right? Don't be afraid to, to unlearn and learn something different and become someone different. Right. And for a lot of men, we are carrying so much. Mm. Yeah. This discussion has to be coupled with, with marriage and, <laughs> and men and yeah. divorces and all this. It's, it's unfortunate, but that's where yeah. we are at the moment. Yeah. We need to heal. Mm. We, need, we really need to heal uh, as men in this country because um, we've had it all wrong and now we're in a place where our entitlement is not working for us. Mm. Our biases are not working for us. We need to change the way we're thinking so that we can help the next generation. Otherwise, we'll do the same mistakes. We'll keep if, making we, the same mistakes. if we are stubborn with what we believe, yeah. we'll keep making the same mistakes. And then we'll watch as our kids are going through it and wonder why we didn't. Right. We, we have to be open. We live in a different world, in a different society. We have to be part of it. Right. Yeah. I think I'll leave it there. <laughs> I think that's where we end it. That was such a powerful finisher. <laughs> thank you. So thank, thank you, you so thank much you. Awesome. for being here. Thank you for joining and having, again, starting to have tough conversations. Yeah. I really look forward to when you start your podcast. Yes. Please let me know because yes. I will add to the description Ooh. so that people can come and find you. That one is no holds barred. <laughs> I love Let that. Let me tell you, we that. shall talk about it. That's, it's it's yeah. necessary, like you've said. And you, you've you set this up. So this is this is the foundation of, of and the blueprint of what we can, yeah. we can copy. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So again, guys, thank you so much for joining this week. Um, feel free to engage further with leaving comments. For those of you who are a bit shy, reach out on the direct messaging or the DMs. Um, for our handles, check in the description bar. And as always, I'll leave you with just the thought and the encouragement to keep having these conversations. Start to have them, be more open, use this as a guide. If you don't know how to start the conversation, pick the episode and share it with the person you want to have this conversation with and then pick the conversation from there. Thank you so much for engaging once again and I look forward to seeing you next week. <laughs>